Right. She went to Israel on some mission for six months, leave her kid at home. By yourself. By yourself. You know, That's and I'm deep. a, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's life. You know, it's like my brother, you're breaking those chains. Yeah. You broke those chains. Absolutely, absolutely. You broke those so, chains. So part of it, you know, when I looked at this man and you know, just started, you know, looking at it, and I mean it's just impressive for you. What would you tell people out there that want to do it, that want to be writers, that want to tell their story? What would you tell them? What would you say to them? I would tell them to really, to really pray about it for because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I pray about it. Uh get the people around you that you trust. Mm -hmm. Um to read it and be brutally honest with yes. you. Mm -hmm. Because even though we have some stories, you know, as we all do, uh, it, we, we probably can't produce it in a way that mm -hmm. everyone will be uh, accepting of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so get, you know, uh, get a good team around you mm -hmm. and let them be honest with you. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that's it for me, you know, you gotta be honest. If it's good, hey, put it out there. If mm -hmm. it's not, keep it to yourself. Absolutely, absolutely, keep put it, it on yourself. your own shelf. Because uh, I, I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing is that you know, when I looked at it, I mean, because I think that for me, when I first probably the seed was laid for me was Nathan McCall's makes me want to holler. Yeah, I read, sure you, yeah, yeah, I read and, that book. Yeah, I read that book. And so I think that when I read Nathan McCall's makes me want to holler, and you know, in, in terms of how he expressed and articulated it, I mean, for me that was right. a point where I said, "Wow," you know, and that kind of probably started planting some seeds mm -hmm. of me saying, yeah, there's a story inside. All my friends look at me, you know, as if I'm wild and crazy. I'm the wild child. And in terms of loving and enjoying life. Uh -huh. And they ask me why. After they read the book, they don't need to ask me why anymore. Right. They understand that the years and years of stress that there were and the aloneness and the loneliness that really created the opportunity. Right. Uh, so I think that that's important. You were talking about you're going up to the right state. What are you doing in, in, in the promotion of the book? Uh, I mean, what's that process look like for you? And are there places that you're going to be that our audience can come out and listen to you? Sure. Uh, as far as the marketing process, I've been Facebooking it up. Mm -hmm. uh, more than a spacing it up. Uh, go to morethanaspace.com. Uh, I've been texting. Uh, I've been on, uh, I was on the Wiz a couple of weeks ago uh, with Nathan Ivey. Uh, I've been on uh, radio with uh, DJ Nikki Swade. Um, you know, so I'm I'm just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. I'll be at Rice State next Thursday as a part of their "It's Not Over" program. It's called "It's Not Over." Shouts out to Calvin Robinson, uh, and I'm going to share my personal testimony with with their young men up there. Uh, I will be at Yosemite Church later on today at, at 5 uh, p.m. To, to, to share my message with the, with the youth, you know, and if you want to book me, please hit me up at uh, info at breakingthechange.org to book me. Uh, I've been at numerous CPS middle schools. Uh, I was at Chase yesterday morning to speak to their young men about, about life and, and, how, and how their future starts today. You know, uh, Withrow has contacted me. I'll be at Winter Withrow International in a couple of weeks. We're in here back from Miss Cleveland. Uh, I'll be at Reese Price. Uh, in, in two weeks, uh, I'll be the keynote speaker at at uh, Mount Healthy Fitness Academy. Uh, I'm just all over the place, and I'm sorry. Shouts out to Don Jordan. I was the keynote speaker at the uh, role model luncheon last week at Wright mm -hmm. Middle School. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just trying to keep busy. You know, I'm I'm going to be where I'm needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that uh, now more than ever, Good. with Good. us experiencing what we are with our youth mm -hmm. and how they're acting. You know, a lot of these kids are acting out violently because they're hurting inside. And they need more brothers like us to get out here. So uh, I'm, I'm dedicated and I'm focused and I'm committed to doing my part. You know, Cincinnati, you know, hold me down. Okay, 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 okay. And the good thing about it, I mean, in, in that, you know, that young people have to, part of it, see that there are options and opportunities that are outside of what you talked about in terms of where the streets take us sometimes mm -hmm. and I think that part of the opportunity is for us to uh, really provide them with another set of, of opportunities is that now they understand well geez I mean I may, have, I may never have thought about authoring a book and I never thought about telling my story and I think that part of what Genesis was and our fellowship was absolutely centered around telling your story and mm -hmm. creating and providing a new beginning breaking the change and so I think that uh, for me that is important uh, as you look at 
your community efforts, as you look mm -hmm. at your outreach efforts, uh, as you look at where you're being booked. And I think that that's important because people need to see a reflection of them that is doing something that is completely non-traditional. Exactly, because what our kids see now is themselves, meaning mm -hmm. they're lonely. They think that they're the only person going through what they're going through, mm -hmm. and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You know, another reason I wrote this book to let I was to let people know that you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. You are not alone. We are out here. Can we get a Michael Jackson song? <laughs> we, you are not alone. <laughs> but, but, but you're not alone, yeah, man. Yeah. And, and when you were in that situation, you, you know, when I was in that situation, I was like, God, you know, what's going on, yeah. brother? You yeah. know, mother, mother doing this. Yeah. Daddy ain't here. There ain't no food in the house. Yeah. Roaches everywhere. Yeah. You know, uh, I told a story to some kids once that, uh, I lived on Finley Street for a summer after mm -hmm. we lost our house. You know, I had a good taste of the good life about a year, year and a half. But when I lived on Finley Street, man, I lived in a house with about seven, eight people, and they all used drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember times I can, I can smell the crack. Yeah, man, that stuff stinks, yeah, man. Yeah, it does. And my mother. You know, went let me go in the kitchen because they was always in there smoking, man. Yeah. So I was fighting for my life. I had to steal to get food to eat. Mm -hmm. I had to steal from them, mm -hmm. you know, just to give them something to eat. And, you know, uh, just looking over my life and what I've been through, man, it's amazing. And I'm mm -hmm. going to say thank you, Jesus, right now. And I want to say thank you to Coach Steele. Thank you to Miss Sharon. You know, for really supporting me and, and, and having my back. Uh, if any kids are watching right now, looking at the camera, stay strong, pray, be focused, write your goals down. If you are a parent out there and, and you're not giving your child or your children your all, please make a change. Please make a change. Break that chain. Be a better father because Fellas, we need you in the household, okay? We need you in the households. And mothers, if you are a single parent and, you're, and, and the father of your child is not there, put your children, put your sons around positive black men, around positive black women, and, and, and put them in very positive environments where they can grow and develop and one day give back in the manner that myself and my brother here are doing. And if you can't find a black one, find you a Mexican, a Hispanic, Somebody. white. I don't care what color they are, but they need a man in their life. Because I think that that's also, you know, an opportunity is, is certainly that you have to have that man and that. It is unfortunate because what happens is, is that what we, when I think about this process, I think about it for men and women. When mm. I think about what I went through, right, and right. the childhood, sexual abuse, the physical abuse, the emotional abuse. And I think about how it impacted me as an adult. And that I t you, you carry this stuff with you. Yeah. You still carry it. And yeah. I mean, it's a part of what makes you strong. Right. And part of what gives you the heart of the champion is, right. is what you had to endure. Right. Hitting, you know, dope fiends upside the head, going through their pockets while they was passed out, whatever it was. Right. You had to do what you had to you do, had and it made you do. who you were. Right. And so, but I think for, for people that, whether you publish it or not, mm -hmm. write it. And, you know, that's my thing is that because I think by going through it, there's a process of that catharsis and those emotions and that you start now it's gone. It's a release. So now it's gone. It's yeah, released. Right, it's, right. I've set myself free. So I think there's some freedom in the ability to articulate and write it. And right. I think for me, that was a huge part of it. And certainly uh, for my sister and us writing and putting things together, uh, I think it's been great for us. Uh, to be able to write it down, and and then in you know for some of you, if you need some deeper therapy, you, may, you might write it and say, oh, I really need Jesus. I need help. I need a psychiatrist. I need something. I need some good drugs. I need an antidepressant. But I think that it gets you to a place where you're saying, I'm okay because I'm able to get it out and share it, and mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of it anymore. Mm -hmm. Writing this means I'm not afraid of it anymore. Right. It doesn't hold me hostage mm -hmm. anymore. So I think about that. Right. You, you mean, you're exactly right, brother. Uh, when I wrote this book. So much anger that I carried around with me was released, and, and it allowed and it, and it allowed me to forgive. Yeah, absolutely. My mother. Yeah. It allowed me to forgive my father, my grandmother, my mm -hmm. grandfather, and all of those that said things to me and done things to me. I I, I forgave them. Good.
okay. and, and, and it allowed me to move on with my life. And ownership, complete yeah. ownership. Yeah. That at yeah. some point, I tell young people also, and when the prison work that I've done, at the end of the day, nobody gives 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 a they, hoot. They don't care. Nobody cares. Don't tell the kids. At the end of the day, it don't matter if you did. Nobody cares. No, if you're alive, care. nobody cares. If you're not living life, nobody cares, man. At the end of the day, nobody is responsible for you ultimately, but you. Brother, I told the kids. <laughs> I, I told the kids at Chase yesterday that no matter what your parents are going through or your loved ones are going through, it's not you. Yeah, exactly. Roberto Allen controlled Roberto Allen. Absolutely. When I took a test, that was my name. Mm -hmm. You know, when I went on the basketball court, that was me. Yeah. Now, I was hurting, but it, it wasn't my problem. Yeah. Children, you control your destiny. Yeah. Teens, you control your destiny. So, you know, if, if mom's acting up, if, if dad acting up, that's their problem. Yeah. Now, mama, I love you. Granny, I love you. Or mm -hmm. Tommy, I love you. But I got to do me. Absolutely. I'm going to take this role less travel. Absolutely. And if I got to go by myself, I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, that was my, my mentality. You got to make sacrifices. Yeah. And, and I think that, and a part of it is, is that, and one thing that I will say, and that I even say in the book, is that I am glad I wasn't in the hood hood. Because if I was in the hood, I, I would, I'd think about the things that I did in the suburbs, you know, all alone. Right. You know, no food, no clothes, no barber. I didn't right. have none of that right. stuff, you know, for the most part growing up. I mean, my high school years, I mean, golly, I look at pictures now that people took when I was in high school and I just look and it kind of saddens me because I really was a bum. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, I had, you know, big old glasses tape on them because I couldn't get, you know, didn't get new glasses. And you're not, and you're even talking about a mama who could have done these things. Mm -hmm. She just was never there. Right. You know, she was, her whole thing was, she gave everything, because my father was a doctor. He was a psychologist. He was a professor at Wright State University and they named a building after him. At really? State University, yes. Uh, he was a he was a psychologist. That's, that's, and that's so insane. you talk you're not talking and my mother was a minister. And so you're talking about somebody who on the surface and the appearance was that you had this great life, you had this great family. But when my father died, my mother never held a job. Yeah. And so whatever she got in terms of the insurance money, I mean, she gave all to the church and gave all to uh, the Charles Folds workshop and gave all the peace and serenity. That was her life. Right. And so I'm sitting over there with nothing, and I'm like, you know, I didn't know what my mother had gotten. <laughs> right. I didn't know anything. I, didn't, I mean, I'm assuming we're broke. Why? Because there's no food in the house. Right. I don't, I'm, there's no barber, there ain't no haircut, there ain't no clothes, basic clothes. You know, I'm struggling. You know, mm -hmm. and then she leaves me with $100. Right. And I'm like, so part of it was that as you grow older, you recognize that her mental health issues that what she was dealing with after the death of my father uh, really caused her to really check out. Right. And at the point of her checking out, I was left alone and I was the youngest of five. All my brothers and sisters were in college or undergrad or graduate school. And then I made it clear to them at an early age, I didn't have any parents anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't try to parent me. Mm -hmm. And so then part of my choice was I moved away. And so when I told them I didn't need any parents, they listened to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how y'all gonna listen to a kid? I was 13. Why didn't you just beat me up or something? Right, right. But they didn't because they were still dealing with a lot of, you know, life issues. Yeah, they own hurt. So I think that a part of it is, is that, you know, and we look at the abuses, we look at the things that people go through and recognize that, that everybody has a story mm -hmm. and that by you understanding your story, but at the end of the day, you can't allow your, your story or the life or what you're living in to keep you where you are. Right. I mean, you know, and then if you look at, allowing it to take advantage or to attack other people i think that that you know to me that's you know an issue because what happens is it seems like we find individuals that create uh, or have a belief that you know that i have to you know by any means necessary survive which means now i'm you know, robbing i'm hitting people upside the head i'm going to other people's houses and they're constantly victimizing people and you don't because have, having been a victim you don't have to do that yeah you know you flipped it and I flipped it. Okay, yeah. we took our negative and made it a positive. Absolutely. That was our fuel to, to mm -hmm. get out of our situation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? So if you upset at home, study harder. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. You know, if if you are an athlete, if you are a football player, hit your hit your hit your hit your teammate harder in practice mm -hmm. or on a football field. If you mm -hmm. crack somebody, yeah. if you're a basketball player, shoot a thousand jump shots. Absolutely. If, if, you, Absolutely. if you play an instrument, practice that instrument. Yeah. You know, make it a positive. Yeah. You know, if you don't have the best grades, get a tutor. Mm -hmm. I told the kids yesterday again, make your teacher earn that paycheck. Absolutely. Go home and look at your situation.